Okay, welcome everybody to uh, Channel 9 Going into 41. Um, I'm Gabriel Desfres on the C++ team at Microsoft. And I'm Steve Carroll. I'm the C++ uh, Dev Manager. So Steve, what do we have today? Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, Angle, which is a OpenGL ES sort of emulation library for um, running on top of Windows Store applications. So it's going to be about building a cross-pad application. We're going to show you some actual code, and we're going to take you through how to get your OpenGL app and move it over on to Windows Store. So is this C Sharp, C++? What is it? Only C++. Ah, it's going native. Yeah. And so we're here today with Cooper Parton. Cooper, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I've I've been at Microsoft for 17 years. Wow. Um, worked on a, a whole lot of things, from uh, driver development to application teams to framework teams. Shipped a couple of 360 Xbox 360 flashes, Xbox One. Um, but uh, I'm currently on the Windows graphics team. Great. And so, what have you been working on there? Uh, uh, the section of the graphics team I'm on is called. Graphics API Layers team. And basically what we do is we take um, complicated to use APIs and we simplify them. OK. OK. And so I work on the Angle project. And um, Angle is a code base that came from Google that uh, stands for Almost Native Graphics Layer Engine. OK. <laughs> and so what we decided to do was take that project and extend it to support the Windows Store. So it's basically using Angle with the Windows Store apps. Yes. OK, that's interesting. So this is a Google project? Yes. Yeah, so we, we actually, it's fully done completely open source. And we work really closely with Google. And uh, actually, all of our changes that we make, we forked the branch. And we take our changes, and we actually exchange changes both ways. And Cats so, and dogs living together. Yes, yeah, mass hysteria. <laughs> OK, great. So. Tell me a little bit about that process. So what it, why, why did you decide to move Angle onto Windows Phone? Yes. So c currently, oh, before we touched Angle, Angle was really targeted to the desktop. Um, What's it been used for traditionally? Uh, Google uses it for Chrome. Oh, they okay. power Chrome. Chrome has an OpenGL ES rendering uh, engine in it. And it uses uh, Angle to support the desktop windows. So they use uh, OpenGL ES for, yeah. uh, for Chrome? Yes. OK, so, so the Google folks use OpenGL ES for Chrome so that they can get a standard layer that they can use on all the platforms that they ship on. Yes. So what was the unique challenges with bringing it to Windows? What we really wanted was the mobile space. OK, so like store apps. Yes, store apps. And uh, the biggest challenge we had was reducing the assumptions that were built inside of Angle down to a lower feature level. So a feature level is a way to describe um, the hardware capabilities of a, of a graphics card, so like DirectX feature level. So like DirectX 9 point what, whatever. Yes, yes. And so we wanted, at minimum, feature level 9.3. Got it. Because that supports a lot of the mobile chipsets that are out there for Windows 8, Phone 8.1. And when you started it, was it DirectX 11? Or? Yeah, it's DirectX 11 with a much higher feature level. It did, just didn't do what was required to support. You know, so they made assumptions about a lot of things. I see. Um, and so we had to put in additional code paths um, to uh, allow OpenGL ES to continue to run on a, on a lower powered hardware. Can you give me an example of the kinds of optimizations that you did in order to uh, bring this to, to store apps? Yes. So what, one thing we actually did was we changed the rendering model within Angle. So Angle uses an intermediate surface. So that you present to an intermediate surface, and then they present that to the screen. And that took actually twice the memory usage and the lower power devices required, you know, that just killed them. On a dinky little phone. Yeah, exactly. And so we implemented a feature called render to back buffer, which basically takes out the intermediate and goes straight to the hardware back buffer. And that brought a lot of memory back and allowed us to um, free up a lot more graphics resources for the app itself. Did and I introduce any complexity? It, it did. So when you render to the back buffer uh, with it, is assumed that the it's upside down, right side up. So we had to do some flipping magic within there, which we did in the shader layer, um, to kind of keep that code all the same. So Angle knows that it's being rendered to the back buffer and has special code paths, but it didn't. Ups it's not like a massive rewrite or anything. So and the API stays the same. The API stays exactly the same. Cool. Cool. Uh, can you show us a demo of how you would actually integrate this into an app? Yes. So our team took some extra time, and we created a NuGet package. 
which contains all of the uh, binaries and things you need to uh, work with Angle. And so let me show you what that NuGet package looks like. I'll search for Angle all right. in NuGet. Now you're going to find a few things, but the key here is Angle for Windows Store. Okay. And then you can just add in, you know, install, and it will add it to your project. I've already installed it. This is the latest. We actually shipped that this morning. So great. Um, now, once that has been added to your project, you have everything required to use Angle within a Windows Store, a Windows Store application. So let me give you a, a little bit of a uh, it's kind of a tour. Is that okay to yeah, show you? Yeah, okay. sure. All right. So uh, a basic Windows Store app. This one um, is centered around using Core Window, and that's a, a Core Window is a WinRT object that mm -hmm. essentially replaces what an HWind would be in concept. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this is a basic app class here. And you'll notice there's a lot of sort of app model things at the top and some events, but we're not going to pay too much attention to those. But you'll start seeing familiar things. Any OpenGL ES developer will understand this EGL display context and surface. Um, EGL essentially is the glue layer that connects up OpenGL ES to OpenGL APIs. It's required to initialize the system. Um, and so here's your display context surface. And we have a renderer, which is pure, just does some pure OpenGL ES calls. So we'll go inside the app here. Um, OK. So when an application is uh, launched in the WinRT side, you, it creates a couple of things for you. And one of those primary things is your core window. So there's gone are the days of Win32, create window, register, you know, you know, proc address, and all of that stuff. So it will create the core window for you and call set window. And here, this code base I'm showing you is actually built off of a template, which I will later then um, tell you where to pick that up. Uh, this is a bunch of boilerplate code that will get you immediately running. And so here you can see where I initialize EGL, you know, passing in a core window. This is a, a helper function that I've created. And I'll walk into the implementation in a second. Um, and then here's your run. This is basically uh, the app's main run, which is your render loop. And you'll notice that there are some standard EGL calls for querying surface information. And then here's a swap buffers. So, so this is basically a pattern that you would follow in any app that was using Angle. Is that yes, yes. Or any OpenGL ES app, really. Mm -hmm. um, this is basically OpenGL ES code. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set a breakpoint and actually show you the initialization of what Angle does. So again, if you're an OpenGL ES developer, I haven't shown you anything that's scary or WinRT, you know, that will kind of, um, this is all familiar. Yes, Here's I feel very safe. <laughs> <laughs> so we have config attributes. These are things that are used just to, to set up what your requirements will be for initializing uh, EGL. You have some context attributes. And here we're saying we'd like to use OpenGL ES 2.0. Um, that's one thing I want to stress. This is not a 3.0 um, implementation. That's coming in the future. Mm -hmm. This is a 2.0 and because there are a lot of apps out there that use OpenGL ES 2. Some surface attributes. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about an optimization for uh, getting better performance and memory usage. And this is a flag that is used for initializing these displays. And then our template comes with some really cool boilerplate default fallback logic. So um, the template's designed to build an app that you develop once, and then when you run it on different platform, or sorry, different devices, it, that the code that does the fallback logic is all in one place. You don't need variations on things. Cool. So we start off by targeting the highest feature level we can go for. We want to give you the best rendering experience. And so this is basically saying, give me full on D3D11. Give me the best feature level you can get. Now, on a phone, that isn't going to work. Essentially, <laughs> Angle <laughs> says, no, I can't do that. And we're like, no problem. We have a set of second fallback tailored attributes that are basically saying, I would actually want you to go more feature level 9.3. And that's when your mobile space is targeted. Um, and of course, the world explodes <laughs> for some reason. Now you have warp. <laughs> It's and we the all know saddest that phone in the world. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to see pretty pixels, but they aren't going to move very fast. <laughs> um, again, this is standard EGL uh, config attribute setup. So if you were to browse around, you'd notice this. Here's another EGL call we used to actually uh, create an API 
or to connect up to the correct display. And then we're down to essentially the last three calls required. We have uh, initializing the, the boilerplate library. I've collapsed the code a bit. This is, there's a lot of fallback logic I, I don't want to, to confuse here. We choose a configuration. Again, these are standard OpenGL ES uh, things. And here we create what's called the rendering, uh, the window surface. This is where your bits are actually going to be drawn to. Um, now, for our implementation, our Windows Store implementation, we've introduced a new, what's called a native window type in the EGL system. So, for a classic desktop, a native window type would be HWind. Um, there's uh, other types for Mac OS and Linux and stuff. But for Windows uh, Store, we introduced a few additional native window types. And one of those is Core Window. Another one is Swap Chain Panel. Those are two different ways, two different kinds of apps. Swap Chain Panel is a XAML-based app. And Core Window is straight up um, kind of bare metal to the metal programming for Windows app. Uh, we support both of those as Windows, Windows, Windows surfaces to render to. And so here you'll notice we create the window. We pass um, our surface to it. This is our core window here. We pack up a little property bag, send it down, create a surface, create our context, make our context current. Again, these are ES calls, and we're ready. Okay, so OpenGL ES has been initialized, and you're off doing your code. That's all of the initialization required in the Windows Store app. So what's the biggest app you guys have managed to get on? This template looks super simple, but like how big of, a, of an app have you managed to actually get to work with this thing? We actually, it's funny, uh, we have Candy Crush from King uh, uh, uses Angle, and they released, actually I think they released today, didn't they, for... I don't remember. Anyway, it's Windows 10 it's Windows launch day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in, in sunny Redmond, Washington. Yes. yes. Uh, so actually, Candy Crush uses Angle, and they went through a full process, and they have multi-platform rendering, and they basically came to us and said, "We'd like to use this because you know we have a lot of OpenGL ES code, and we think this might be uh, performant enough to run on mobile devices, desktops, and the full deal." So uh, they came to us. We we actually gave them very little support. They just took and ran. And they said, we'll come to you with questions. Mm -hmm. They came to us with a running demo. And we're like, we've done it correctly. If you, if you can do this with very little help. Mm -hmm. And they had our template. And they started from that. And they built full-on Candy Crush to work with it. So that is that's awesome. fantastic. Yeah. OK. So wow, OK. So you got all Candy Crush. That's pretty cool. But I don't believe any graphics demo until I see a cube spin. So hit F5. All right. There it is. All right. That's what <laughs> I'm talking cute. about. Yeah. <laughs> A All right, so cube. so uh, so people are interested in you know taking an OpenGL application, OpenGL ES. I'm going to get that right eventually, and <laughs> bringing it to Windows Store. Yes. What should what's the call to action here? What should they be doing? Actually, let me show you what the public templates are that actually shipped today. There's a okay. new template that shipped today. So what we'll do is we'll there's a cross-platform template. This is where it will land. This is sort of the extreme. This says, you know, hey, I'm serious about sharing my rendering code, which is really what Angle's saying. You've done a lot of work. You've, you've put a lot of power into all of your ES rendering code. You'd like to preserve that. You don't want to rebuild it. Great. Um, and you don't have to learn DirectX. And so here, there's this template that has shipped today. Um, I think the Visual Studio team shipped this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's us. Yes. And this uh, contains the pretty much the code I was showing you, in addition to other uh, cross-platform bits and right so the thing that's really cool about this is not only will you be able to th this is a cross-plat application so if you you can do your Android development here as well as your iOS as well as your Windows yes yep and build them all from the same IDE and and live and live and then eventually die also in Visual Studio <laughs> correct <laughs> what better life could there be <laughs> all right uh, all right well thank you very much Cooper all right well, Steve, that was cool. Uh, it was really nice to see uh, someone from Windows outside the C++ team come and present something really nice, real graphic stuff going on. It's all C++. That's right. And we're actually filming this, as I mentioned, on launch day for Windows 10. So today, you know, after you finish this and after you leave lots of comments below to tell us how to make these better or what kinds of topics you want next, please go ahead and install Windows 10. Yep. Grab the Click Visual the Studio link. tools for, for building a new Windows 10 application and show us the cool stuff that you can build yep. with Visual Studio 2015.